Bonsoir tout le monde, euh, j'espère que vous allez bien ce soir. Donc, on a la chance de faire une présentation avec, en direct de LA avec CSUN University. En deux mots, euh, Studies Up, euh, donc nous, en fait, nous représentons les universités euh, étrangères en France, on est leurs agents officiels et notre rôle justement est d'accompagner gratuitement les étudiants qui souhaitent partir à l'étranger dans le cadre d'études. Ce soir, Sison, vous allez voir que c'est une université qui est située à Los Angeles, en Californie, et qui vous propose des programmes au niveau bachelor, au niveau master, dans de nombreux, nombreux domaines. Et vous avez également la possibilité d'aller là-bas pour un semestre. Je vais laisser la parole à Boris et Jess, qui vont nous présenter Sison. L'idée ce soir, c'est que vous ayez une meilleure vision de, de, de ce qu'est Sison, de ce que cette université propose, et... Euh, ensuite, on continuera par, euh, par des questions-réponses. Donc, je laisse la parole à Boris. Boris, it's you. <laughs> Your microphone is, is, uh, is off, Boris. Uh, salut, can you, hear the, can you see the video? Is it playing? Sorry, apparently it is. What sound? No sound. No sound. Okay. No sound. Okay, hold on. And it was jumpy. Do you want to restart? Okay. Sound. Good. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Welcome, everybody. Bonjour. Salut. Bonsoir. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Boris, um, and I'm the Outreach and International Programs Manager here at CSUN. And let me pause you two. The only thing my dad is... <laughs> it's always a little tricky. Sorry for the technical difficulties. You know how it goes sometimes with two and trying to manage. Anyhow, there we go. Perfect. Um, so I'm the Outreach International Programs Manager here at CSUN. I have with me Jess. Jess, would you want to say something real quick? Hi, nice to meet you, everyone. My name is Jess, uh, short for Jessica Isomoto. I am the Program Manager for the Study Abroad Program at California State University, Northridge. And by the way, you will hear us call it CSUN instead of CSUN or the whole name, uh, because we think it's cute to have the word sun in our title. We're in sunny Los Angeles. So welcome to CSUN. Perfect, thank you. Um, yeah, and today we will tell you a little bit about CSUN, about our university, where we are located, what we do, and of course, answer any of your questions. So if you have yeah. any questions, um, please make sure, don't be shy. Um, to ask them and then we'll get right into it. Uh, a little bit about myself. I myself was born and raised in Germany, so English is not my first language, so I know how it feels like to be an exchange student and what the struggles can be. Um, and um, Jessica and I, our team, we're here to support you if you have any questions, um, also to um, make sure that any type of concerns that you might encounter, that we take care of that. All right, perfect. Let's dive right into the presentation. Okay, let me switch back. Here's my fancy setup. There we go. So a little bit about CSUN. So California State University uh, system. Um, CSUN is part of the California State University system, which is the largest public university system in the US. Just quickly, we have 23 different campuses throughout California. Uh, and CSUN is actually among the top three largest of those campuses. Uh, and we are located right here. 
in Los Angeles, California, in beautiful sunny California. So if you like 300 days of sunshine throughout the year, you are definitely at the right place. Uh, I said CSUN is one of the largest. Uh, well, we have about 40,000 students year round from, uh, um, you know, with about 3,000 international students from more than 100 different countries. Um, so that's just a little bit of an overview. Let me check here on the chat. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, yeah, and our students can study a lot of different things. So they can study uh, actually a little bit more than um, 140 different um, undergraduate or bachelor options and a little bit more than 100 different master degrees. Um, and, you know, also we do have some doctoral programs as well, but they're more limited. So we mainly focus on undergraduate um, and graduate degrees. And of course, we have our famous study abroad program, um, as well as an intensive English program as well. A um, couple of things about our university. If you take a look here at the map, you can see um, the Los Angeles International Airport, right? That's the, um, that's the little airplane. And we are about 30 minutes north of the Los Angeles International Airport. Now, LA is a super big city. Just, you know, uh, it just takes some time to get from place A to place B. But we are within the city of Los Angeles. It's very easy to get from CSUN to locations such as Hollywood, Beverly Hills, Santa Monica, um, Malibu, all of them with, are within easy driving distance of our campus. Uh, I'm sure some of you have seen those locations in some movies. All right, let me go to the next slide. Let's talk a little bit more about our campus life. So CSUN um, and our students, of course, you kind of want to know, hey, what can I expect if I come to your campus, right? What kind of things can I do there? Um, and what can I do as a semester, um, a study abroad student at CSUN? Well, we do have uh, a lot of different facilities available to you. And the one that really you know, um, I think it's very important to mention is the Student Recreation Center. It's almost like a beating heart that we have on campus for our students. Uh, it's very popular. It's um, Student Recreation Center. It's a fancy name for a big gym and you can do a lot of different things there. So you can see that building on this slide. It's about three stories high, um, state of the art. I think it just turned about 10 years. Um, so yeah, it's, it's still very modern, um, highly energy efficient. And in there, you have a three-story um, high climbing wall. So if you're into rock climbing, you can do that there. Um, there's an indoor track ring. There are uh, volleyball courts, basketball courts where you can play, get together, play against each other. Um, of course, you can do cardio um, for, for those of you who like to work out. You can lift weights if you like to lift some weights. Not a problem whatsoever. And then you can also attend uh, group classes. It can be spinning, cycling, Zumba yoga, meditation, all kinds of things are being offered there. A uh, great opportunity for you to maybe also try something new. Um, one last thing I'd like to mention about the SRC. Uh, it also does have a big recreational pool outside. So in case if you want to um, you know, get some sun while you study, if you want a sun bath, absolutely that's possible. We do, we see students um, post on either Instagram or on Facebook um, pretty much every um, year and just can tell you, um, and just send pictures back home to your family. Hey, I'm studying and they're at the pool. Uh, so it's kind of cool, you know, just enjoying the sunshine here in California. Um, if you're tired, if you work out and if you're tired from, you know, working out at the SRC, you can go right next door to the Oasis Wellness Center. That's another really cool place that we have on campus. And I think it makes us somewhat unique because I don't think you would find that um, much on any other public university campus. It's very unique to CSUN. Uh, what you can do there is you can go and de-stress. So it's a place that we have for students where you go and relax. You can get a massage. There are massage chairs available to you. You can take a nap. So there are napping pots. Um, so you see those spheres on this slide in the upper, what is that, right-hand corner uh, where students are taking a nap. That's literally something you can do. You can just close the lid and take a nap and get ready for the next class, next exam, uh, whatever it might be. Um, also, you can go to the meditation garden, do some yoga, some meditation. So all of that is available to you. So this focuses more on your well-being, your mental well-being, and to make sure that you can relax. Um, so I'm sure as you can see, CSUN has a very holistic student approach. So very, very important to us. We do not only take care of you academically, but also mentally and physically. Now, another great thing that you absolutely should do if you're 
if you are on our campus is you should um, attend some of our student organizations and um, clubs. So we do have a number of these, more than 300, and that can be literally anything. They can be interest-based, they can be study-based, um, they can be you know, social cost-based. Um, we also do have a very active uh, Greek life on our campus. We do have fraternities and sororities as well. Uh, if you have any questions about those, please let us know. Um, and for student clubs, it's really great. Um, there's an international student club if you want to connect with other international students. Um, if you are, if you have a hobby, let's say you are into playing chess, there's a chess club at CSUN. Um, all kinds of clubs, anything you can think of. So the idea behind that is that you can connect with other CSUN students who have the same interests as you and make new friends and just, or maybe even discover uh, a new subject. Um, a couple of other things we have on our campus, we also do have a student health center. So just in case if you're not feeling well, you can go there. There's medical staff in attendance. It's open throughout the week um, during the semester. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything to go there. Um, and the um, other one is the Matador Advisement Hub for academic advisement, but we will help you with the academic advisement part as well. Um, and if you have any questions specifically regarding courses, um, please let us know and um, Jess would definitely be the person to talk to. All right, um, next one, super quick. In case you are wondering, yes, we do also have student housing available and it's really cool. It is very convenient, super conveniently located on our campus. Um, there is a shared apartment style housing option. That's the um, common one where you share uh, one bedroom with two people. Um, so as you might have seen from movies, um, very common here in the US and you share a two bedroom apartment. So a whole apartment with two bedrooms with four students total, fully furnished, including Wi-Fi, cable TV, there's a little desk where you can study. Um, laundry um, facilities are available as well. Uh, there's resident support staff if you have any questions. It's very secure. So you need a little key card to get into your building as well. So not everybody can just walk into your housing building. Uh, and the cool thing about housing, it also has two swimming pools, uh, one beach volleyball court, one basketball court, a big dining hall. So if you're hungry, it's called Ger Geronimo's. It's very, very popular among our students. Uh, our students love to go there. They have a variety of foods. It's um, buffet style. Um, they also do have a big uh, section where you can get some Asian cuisine and try some Asian cuisine, a uh, great place. And then of course, there's also a community center where you can hang out with other housing students, uh, play some table foosball, uh, play some PlayStation, um, work and study if you like to. So it's really cool. It's a great place on our campus, our housing. Uh, and of course, most important thing, you can wake up in the morning, um, get out of bed, and it takes you about 10 minutes to uh, walk to your classroom usually. So that's something a lot of other students are quite envious about. Um, having said that, if you do have another housing option or if you consider other housing options, it's perfectly fine. We do not force you to stay in our on-campus housing, but again, it's a great option available for you. Perfect, that was it for the quick introduction about CSUN. I hope that helped give you a little bit of an overview of our university. The next one is a little bit more fun and then a little bit more specific towards our semester at CSUN program. So first off, some of you may wonder, okay, CSUN, haven't really heard much about CSUN, but I'm sure you've heard of these people. These are some of our famous alumni um, that we have that went to CSUN. Uh, Eva Longoria is one. I'm sure most of you know her from Desperate Housewives. Um, Alison Hannigan, she um, took part in, she was, you know, How I Met Your Mother. Um, she acted in that show. Um, Sergei Tankian, he is the uh, lead singer of System of a Down. And then um, most recently, um, we have Doc Emhoff, who is now the first second gentleman. Um, so Kamala Harris's a husband, he also is a CSUN alum. Um, yep, with that, let me hand it off to Jess and let's talk a little bit more specifically about the semester at CSUN program. Hi, thanks Boris. I feel like the one thing that we didn't mention in the previous slides about our campus and student life is that you probably saw in the video, we have a big, beautiful campus that really matches what you're probably expecting for an American college experience. Like it looks like an American university. They film a lot of movies there um, and pretend to be other schools because we look like a school. <laughs> um, and you just get to have that whole um, American college vibe where students hang out on campus, sit around in the 
yard, like in the lawn, uh, talk to each other, study together, eat and hang out. Um, it's not the kind of campus that's in the middle of a city and people just come for class and then leave for work or other things. People drive to campus, park there and stay all day. They eat there, they study there, they make friends there. So if you're looking for that kind of environment, I, that's what you'll get. We have everything with, as you said, with sports and things to do, um, fraternity life, sorority life, um, all the classes, all the clubs and activities, everything except an American football team. So we have almost everything. <laughs> uh, the semester at CSUN program is what we call our study abroad program. We actually are very American and we are lazy. So we like to do shortcuts. We call it by its acronym, SAC, semester at CSUN. And we actually even call it something shorter. When we say SAC, sometimes we just call it the SAC program. <laughs> which is not a great name, but honestly, it's just what we do in America. We make everything a short acronym. So the SAC program is available to you for either our spring semester, which is the one that starts in January, or the fall semester, which starts in August. Um, we do have some basic requirements there, but I will skip over that because I know our studies up people will help you to make sure that you're the right person and that you're eligible. So we can move past that. Um, do we have the slide about? Yes. So our program staff, you can see pictures of myself, Jess, uh, Boris. Uh, we also have our student life person, Yukiko. We have one of our admissions people, Ida. Um, we actually have about five or six more staff members who actually support this program behind the scenes. But what's great about this program is when you come to us, we really take care of you all the way. We get to know you by name. We know exactly who you are. So on this campus of 40,000 students, you always have a home in our office where you can walk in and be recognized by name and face, and we're happy to know you. We provide advisement for academic things, for student life things, for anything, for immigration and CVIS questions. We have that in our office right there. Um, we also provide social events and trips, so there's fun things to do. You don't have to just figure it out on your own. We will also offer you some fun things and personal attention. We get to know you. Uh, the other cool thing that Boris mentioned already is our staff is pretty international. Um, Boris, as you know, is from Germany. Yukiko is from Japan. Ida is from Armenia. Our Boris and my our boss, Vanessa, is from Brazil. Uh, so we have a lot of different languages and cultures represented on our staff. I am from Hawaii, but I am still just American and I really only speak English, but that's okay. I love learning all different languages from all of you. <laughs> if I may back here real mm -hmm. quick, yeah. our building is also the coolest building I think on campus. Um, uh, so yeah. hands down, um, you know, the building that you see right here, it's, it's really nice, very modern. Um, so they do a lot of uh, commercials there, a lot of filming too. They do. Uh, Hollywood. Hollywood is about 20 minutes away. So that's why you will uh, probably run maybe even into some filming on campus. So it's kind of cool. All right. Yeah. Uh, there was, sorry, just wanted to mention. Equity. No, that's okay. What else we have? Um, the, oh, so uh, academics. Yeah. Yeah, so for the academics, um, I know that we'll probably have some questions about classes and we're, you're welcome to ask those questions. We'll be done in just a few minutes with this. Um, but we do have all the different academic colleges within our university covering many, many different topics. As you can see, we actually are so big, we have about 9,000 classes each semester. So there's a lot to choose from. Um, it's my job and Boris's job as your advisors to help you choose the right classes, to find the right match for the classes you need for your home universities. Um, but we're also here to help you give suggestions and maybe offer some fun classes if you have the time and chance to take something a little different that only American schools might offer. You can definitely take like a recreation class with us. Um, some of our students sign up for something like basketball or tennis <laughs> because you can, and you can receive credit for that. So it counts as a real class for us for study abroad. So there's a lot of different fun things you can do and we don't limit you. Um, you're welcome to try anything that our university has to offer. And all of your classes are mixed with regular CSUN students. So you're not in a special program. You're part of our regular university community. Perfect. Thank you. A um, couple of fun facts. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to? Do you want me to take one? I can. Let me do the Star Trek. Yeah, one you do the Star Trek one. <laughs> I'll do the Star Trek one. All right. Awesome. So as I mentioned before, um, we have a lot of filming going on on our campus. Uh, actually, I'm not sure um, you guys might be familiar with Subway. That's just a side note. Uh, actually, one of the more the newest Subway commercial currently running in the U.S. with Tom Brady and a bunch of um, you know sports stars was actually filmed on CSUN because the only reason why I know this is when I looked I didn't at know the. That. 
when I looked at the commercial, I was like, wait a second, that looks like our CSUN campus. And sure enough, uh, it was actually filmed at CSUN. But anyway, I'm getting uh, ahead of myself. So filming, uh, our campus has been used for a lot of different Hollywood productions, a lot of different series that you might be familiar with. And our library right here is actually used as the Star Trek Academy in one of the newest uh, oh, Star Trek hmm. movies. Yes. Starfleet Academy Star, is the Star, true name. Starfleet Academy. Sorry. <laughs> Starfleet <laughs> Academy. So just uh, for you Star Trek fans out there. Um, and yeah, we also had a couple of other series just filmed here on our campus. The Office, for example, uh, American Idol has been filmed on our campus. So it's again, very common to see that throughout the semester. And it's kind of cool. So, um, you know, just in case if you see it on campus, just make sure to be mindful and not necessarily start screaming, right? If somebody films, because then they might not be too happy about that. But other than that, uh, it's a very common occurrence. Our location in Los Angeles, we're in the, um, our city name, our neighborhood name is Northridge, but we are actually officially part of Los Angeles. And we're very close to Hollywood and Burbank, which are also part of Los Angeles. Hollywood is, of course, where you know they film um, movies and things like that, but Burbank is where they film all the TV shows um, or game shows and other things like that. So we're really close to those two places. And I think that's why we're such a popular filming spot. And we have so many students who are excited about the industry, you know, the film and entertainment industry. And that could be a fun way for you to also maybe take one or two classes uh, in, in the entertainment world and cinema and television arts. So that could be another option. Um, another fun fact is we do have a mascot. It's a very American college thing. We are the Matadors. Go Matadors. So our mascot is Maddie the Matador. He is a guy. I don't know if you can see the picture. He's got a big plastic head and it's ridiculous. And we love him. He's so much fun. He dances at on all over campus, special events at parties. He goes to all of our sporting events. And honestly, it's just a fun thing to do. So we always say, once you're a matador, you're always a matador. Um, meaning we welcome you into our matador family and we're very school spirit, lots of school pride. We wear red and black, our school colors. A lot of students wear the hoodies with the CSUN on it and the t-shirts. So we're very much a fun American campus like that if that's what you're looking for. Uh, in the bottom picture, it's kind of small, hard to see, but we do have a squirrel uh, because squirrels are all over our campus. It's just a thing. Like everybody takes pictures of them, laughs at them. They steal food from us. Our squirrels love Panda Express, which they really should not eat. It's Chinese food, Chinese takeout. They should not eat that. Um, the squirrels are everywhere. We have a very uh, campus with lots of trees and grass and greenery and so lots of animals. Uh, we have a duck pond where the little ducks come out and hatch every spring. We have baby ducklings and turtles and it's just a nice way to relax in nature and get away from campus where you cannot hear cars. You're surrounded by orange trees in our orange grove and there's a little pond and you can sit and relax. So we have at least three different nature spots on campus that are pretty big sized and nice uh, and that gives you an example of how big our school is. Perfect. And I think we're getting to the last slide. Let me, perfect. Now no, it looks like, okay. Um, also guys, I know you know, but we are obviously in California, right here in LA and around LA, you have a lot of different things that you can do. You can go to a lot of different national parks. You can check out other cities. Uh, San Francisco is about um, five hours away driving. Las Vegas is anywhere from four to five hours away driving distance. Uh, San Diego is very close. It's about two mm -hmm. hours away uh, to LA. So if you want to check out other cities, you can do that. If you want to see nature, there's a lot of nature around here, a lot of different national parks. There's uh, Yosemite, there is um, Joshua Tree, um, there is Sequoia National Park. Um, so if you are into nature, if you are into hiking, definitely uh, a great place to discover California. Um, also, Jess is from Hawaii and Los Angeles is actually one of the main hubs to get to Hawaii. So if you wanted to check out Hawaii and uh, make that flight, and I'm not sure, I know it's very difficult from France to get to Hawaii because you pretty much have to fly once around the world. Um, from LA, it's not that hard. Um, so it would be a great opportunity for you as well. We've seen students who actually uh, took some time uh, and did that as well. Um, yeah, with that, that's pretty much the end of our presentation. Jess, did I miss anything? 
Uh, yeah, I'll say that in case you're excited about exploring the outdoors, we talked about the national parks, we actually have a group on campus that organizes these trips for you. So for a really low price, you can get a whole weekend with camping and all the gear and food and friends and transportation to one of our local national parks. And it's just a really fun option. So we really make it pretty easy for you to come to LA and explore and have people who help show you around. So you don't have to figure everything out on your own. Uh, also, if you choose to go to Hawaii, I do have a little secret Hawaii guide that I created for my students that I will happily share with you if you decide to go. <laughs> so is that it? Do we have, are we done with our presentation? Yeah, I think so. Um, so I can either leave it on here on this slide um, if no, you have any questions <laughs> um, or I can just stop sharing. Okay, perfect. Yeah, uh, so sure. let's, get, <laughs> let's get into your questions. Anybody, any questions? We're here for you. Uh, let us know. And if no student has a question, and Sophie, if you have any common questions yeah. you want to ask on behalf of students, that would be fine too. I know that quite a few of them tonight Sorry. are actually, uh, they're actually engineering students. So maybe um, I already mentioned to them the, 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 the rankings and the fact you were accredited at BET and so on, but maybe Event. you've got, um, yes, maybe you've got a few words on, um, on this college uh, specifically, maybe into engineering program and IT programs, maybe that would be, uh, would be lovely. Sure. Um, we have, as you already know, a very good engineering college and our engineering college includes computer science together. So it's one big college. Um, one of the best things that my study abroad students in the past, and I've been doing this for almost 10 years. <laughs> um, one of the things that they like is as a bachelor's level student, I believe everyone here is a bachelor's level student. Yes. Is that correct. Yeah, um, you actually are welcome to come to our program and take some master's level courses if there is something that matches your interest and you feel qualified. Um, it's up to you to decide if you feel that that's going to be something you can succeed in, not too hard, uh, but it really opens up your range of what you can take. So we have many engineering students who take, um, you know, four classes as a standard course load at our university. Um, and they, maybe they take three bachelors and one master's. And that's kind of a fun and different thing you can do. Um, and it happens in our management, engineering management program, our systems and operations. Um, we also have it in mechanical engineering um, and sometimes in our electrical and computer engineering as well. Uh, if there are specific questions, I'm happy to answer them. I, not an engineer myself, but I know kind of a lot about the classes, excuse me, uh, since I have been advising students for some time. There you go. Oh, thank you, Boris. That's perfect. Mm. So yes, you can see you've got yeah a lot of program and yeah four thousand students uh, that are part of this uh, this college. So that's quite interesting to see also all the the different uh, uh, programs available. So that's good. Yes. So and what about yeah. the, the workload? Uh, usually it's mm. what, 12, 12, 15 hours a week and, and then uh, work on the side? What, what do you think more or less? Uh, yes, uh, it, it varies. In engineering, it's hard to give a good answer because as, as you students know, some of your classes are only lecture classes, but some also are lab classes, yes. possibly with design credits, right? design units. So of course, the amount of time could be a lot more. Yeah. Uh, so it's hard to say, but I think it's comparable to what you're expecting from home. Um, yeah. I believe that usually in the American system, we take maybe one class less than you might take typically in your programs in most of Europe. Mm -hmm. So you might actually feel like that's a good thing and it's less, or you might ask to take an extra class with us because we allow it. And if your school requires it, it's fine with us. You just have to pay a little extra tuition to take maybe one extra class. So it just depends what you're looking for. Okay, that sounds great. And then yeah. you've got uh, uh, for the exam periods. So mm -hmm. you've got uh, all kind of exam. Is it only at the end of the semester or yeah. you've got also uh, ongoing uh, um, uh, evaluation during the semester? We, we do, yes, it's a yeah. great question. It's a very American university style. So you have um, midterm exams or mid semester exams halfway through the semester. Um, but some of our professors also will do maybe three exams total. So maybe there's two in the middle of the semester and one final at the end. Um, you also will have participation and attendance points that might contribute to your final grade. You also will have design projects or other projects that might be uh, 
a large chunk or good percentage of your final grade. So there's many things that add up to your grade. Uh, this is not something you're used to, but it's actually kind of nice because in a foreign university, you will be able to get some feedback and some sort of grades and answers from your professors early in the semester. So you understand how you're doing and what the expectations are. Um, it's helpful, I think, to have the grade feedback and to be building your grades slowly throughout the whole semester. That sounds great. And then you mentioned earlier, and I think that's an important point as well, is that uh, uh, the student won't be uh, stuck in a class together and they will be actually <laughs> mixing with the with the uh, American student. I think that's a very important yes. point to, uh, to underline. Um, so that's great. Yes. <laughs> Yes, and we also have a very international population. There's, uh, we said about 40,000 students, um, maybe it's more like 39,000 now. Um, and of the 39,000 total students at CSUN, approximately 3,000 or 2,500 are international. So it's not a lot, um, but it does make you a little special, which is kind yeah. of cool. Uh, yeah. But it also means there's, you know, over 80, 90 languages spoken on campus from different countries. So that's kind of nice too. When you walk around campus, um, you will hear voices around you of different languages. Um, and that's especially great because a lot of our American students are also from their own cultural backgrounds and, and strongly tied to that. So we have quite a few American students who are either from um, different uh, cultural backgrounds, uh, different, uh, maybe their immigrant status themselves or their parents were, and they're still speaking their own native languages. Uh, and we really love that about our campus. And part of LA too, right? We're just like Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great because you, you've got a nice number of international students, but not too many. And it's true that many. for mm -hmm. a French student to go in an American university, knowing that uh, the VS numbers will be actually the local, I think that's fantastic to really yes. uh, face the culture and uh, really have a fantastic time there. So that's great. Yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. Our students are always really happy. Uh, we Boris and I love running this program because the students just they make us love LA more you guys have such a good time we do our best at orientation to welcome you we take you on a free bus trip to Santa Monica and to view some things like the Hollywood sign um, nice. and then yeah and we help to arrange some social events to make it easier for you to meet friends uh, your first friends will be the other international students in our study abroad program but that's okay it's a good place to start yeah. and then you will branch out and make more friends in your classes so it's really a lot of fun it's a wonderful wonderful way to spend your summer, to spend your, your fall. Uh, hopefully you come a little early and stay a little late and make the most of your time in Los Angeles. Yeah, no, that's great. Do you have any specific questions, uh, any of you? Um, I think might be the right time to, uh, to ask questions. Feel yes. free. Uh, we are just a nice number. So just, uh, you can just, uh, Put your microphone on if you've got any question. It's the right timing to uh, to ask for it. Boris and Jess are here, so please feel <laughs> free and don't be shy. <laughs> Boris was also a student. Oh, go ahead. Yes. I have a question. Uh, I applied for a mechanical engineering uh, master degree, but I still uh, have no uh, answer from the admission committee. Uh, mm. Should I be worried? Degree. Oh, no, you don't have to be worried, uh, Theodore. It's just that for master degree, the uh, the admission team is on it, but it, take, it takes a bit of time. So uh, not to worry, we will get an answer for you uh, soon. <laughs> we were waiting for, you know, the last paperwork from your school, which we submitted. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's going to happen uh, okay. very soon. Thank you. Anyone else? Any specific well, question? Yes, I have a question. You spoke yes. about the student housing, but what are the other options to live? Are there anything else that the student's housing? I yes, just, I the understand. student housing. Yes, yeah, the student housing. So the uncompensated ac accommodation is one option. But like Jess and Boris mentioned before, it's not compulsory. Of course, you can then look by yourself for share accommodation or flat outside of the campus. Mm -hmm. Um, then we will give you a, a list of, of some of them, and uh, but you will need to actually book uh, then on your own. Right. Okay. But that's both options, yes. We don't ask you to, uh, it's not a must to be on the campus. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's exactly. true. Sometimes it's a it's a good way. I think when you come from on the other side of the world, you uh, mm. you just arriving, and it's true that the first semester is actually often a good idea to be uh, to be on campus. But it all depends. It's everyone's choice. So you you uh, you you can you're welcome to do uh, either way. And uh, if I may, um, Sarah, um, if you are looking for, let's say, a housing option which is not on campus, I would recommend ask around, ask some other um, friends uh, who are going with you to CSUN to maybe find something together. Um, yeah. So that will cut, cut down on the cost. That's one thing you have to be aware of here in Los Angeles. Rent sometimes can be a little high because it's just like New York City. A lot of people live here. Um, so renting space is limited, just like, um, you know, just like in, in, in Paris or any other uh, major city. So be mindful there. But there are a lot of options. So there are a lot of options available. Um, but of course, the more people you know and the more people you room with, um, the cheaper and the less expensive it gets. A couple things to add here. Um, one, Los Angeles is a car city. So if you are not living on campus, you might consider buying a car, which is actually very possible to do at a reasonable price if you're doing a used car and you share it with friends for the semester. So many of our students do that. Uh, that is helpful. Um, parking is also expensive. So that's another thing in Los Angeles as a big city. Um, and our public transportation is not so great. We have it and like within Northridge, our bus system is actually pretty good, but it's just in the small area of that is around the university. To go from Northridge to the beach, for example, could take you almost two hours on public transportation. And two hours is a long time for a very short distance. So our, in general, Los Angeles, it can be hard to get around without cars. It doesn't mean you have to buy one. You could also do our ride share services like Uber and Lyft mm -hmm. and other things like that. Those are very common and reasonably priced. Uh, so that's an option. Um, and the second thing, if you do decide to get an apartment, you should know that, um, Wait, we just talked about prices. Oh, uh, in Northridge, because we're a residential suburban area, we have quite a few houses. So our students used to also rent a whole house with a swimming pool uh, for the semester. And I know that sounds extravagant, but it wasn't more expensive than getting a flat uh, because if you have more people in there, sometimes that it works. So there's many different options because we're a big university, these surrounding neighborhoods frequently rent to um, students. So they're used to it. And there's a lot of times a short-term leases that are available. So it's, it's a, maybe a better chance near our campus to find a place on your own than in other parts of Los Angeles that might be looking for year-long rent rental agreements. That sounds good. <laughs> a house <laughs> with a swimming pool, everyone would dream yeah. of it. <laughs> sounds like perfect. And usually how, how they found this kind of housing, is it through real estate you would recommend or maybe a specific website? Uh, I don't know that Craigslist, is it still a website that is so-so? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Boris, you want to start or do you want me to? Uh, sure. Um, so there are a number of things um, how you can find your own housing. I would not go with Craigslist, though, because okay. uh, not anymore. Is, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's it, good it's... to know. That's perfect. You know, because uh, uh, for the one who don't know, Craigslist is supposed to be the equivalent in France of Le Bon Coin. So it's actually good to, to find out. Yeah, um, the, the reason why I would go mm -hmm. or advise against uh, Craigslist is because content on Craigslist is unregulated. So that means anybody can post anything uh, and there's nobody to vet that content. Right. And you don't want to, right. to end up in a situation where you go somewhere and you don't know where you are. And, you know, so just be just a personal safety thing. That's what I would say. Um, Otherwise, you can go to a lot of different, we have a lot of different web pages for um, apartmental uh, websites where you can go. Um, it's just a lot of them. If you just do a quick Google search and you just yeah. look for apartments in Los Angeles, you'll find a lot. Um, other than that, Facebook and social media is always good. Yeah. Um, connect with other CSUN students. And I'm sure just you can add a little bit more to that too. Yeah, um, I know students, uh, especially young students, don't use Facebook for fun <laughs> for themselves, uh, but they use it as a student. So it's very popular for academic groups, like our, like our College of Social and Behavioral Sciences has a Facebook page where they interact with students and students interact with professors and, and other students there. So it's academically popular, but it's also popular for rental groups. So there's at least three that I know of that have been running for a few years that work really well of rooms to rent or share or apartment 
apartments to take over leases and other things. So in terms of housing for CSUN, there's a few groups that you can enter. They're, they're not regulated either, but because they're usually just only for people who care about CSUN, about one yeah. school, it's, you know, pretty, it's pretty fair. And most of my students have found apartments or houses through that. Okay, that sounds great. That's, mm -hmm. thank you for the tip. Yeah. Yeah. And then we share that with uh, our students during orientation. We give them links uh, before they arrive and then when they arrive. Okay. So for those who didn't book uh, the on campus accommodation, what would you mm -hmm. recommend? You recommend just to, to book a, a, a smaller backpack or a hotel nearby. And then at the orientation, you give them advice and then they start to look and visit around. What, what, mm -hmm. what do you suggest usually? So, sort of. Um, we recommend that it takes at least two to three weeks to find a place. So two or three weeks is about average. It's yeah. very rare that someone takes longer than that yeah. to find yeah. a place. However, uh, before the pandemic, before COVID, yeah. uh, Airbnb was a very popular option. And there yes. were many options around our neighborhood to do an Airbnb as a temporary place. However, I don't know for sure uh, if that's still happening. I don't know what, what rules, not rules, uh, like what uh, people have changed in terms of renting their own places out. So actually I, I do not know if Airbnb mm. is still common and available right now during the pandemic. So okay. the other, yeah. So the other thing is we don't have any backpack hotels or short or cheap student hostels or anything in our neighborhood. Those mm. are all in the other parts of LA that are quite far away. So that could be, it's, it's great to do, but it, it could be frustrating because you'd have to then physically get to the Northridge area yeah. or North Hollywood or somewhere nearby to look for a, a house, mm -hmm. right? So you have to kind of decide what's the right thing to do. Um, there's a couple uh, hotels nearby our campus that might be easier, even, even though it seems like it, it's more expensive, just mm -hmm. the location and the lack of not having to drive to yeah. go look for new apartments, that might make it better. So uh, yeah. Boris, what do you think, Boris? Did I answer that correctly? Yeah, I would say so. So, um, you know, the, the more you plan ahead, the better. Um, so just to, you know, alleviate any stress that you might run yeah. into finding housing, uh, make it as easy um, on you as possible. Just look ahead. And if you need any type of uh, tips or any type of recommendations, feel free to send um, send us an email or get yeah, in touch sure. with us. You know, you can always do okay. that as well. Um, so, yeah, so we, we always try to do our best to, to assist you. We can only go so far, though, because some things, um, you know, we mm -hmm. since we work for the state of California, we, we cannot become like your, your housing agent in, in that sense, right? Um, right. We, but yeah, we, we will cannot, definitely give you tips, yeah. yeah. Right. We cannot officially recommend certain private places because we're a government entity as a public university. So as our role, we cannot do that. But we offer good advice and we, we usually say, other students have done this, and we give that as an example. Yeah. Uh, the, se the second thing as a warning, I just heard you say about it, personal safety and things. Um, do not give your money in advance until you're yeah. here in Los Angeles. Yeah. We've yeah. actually, unfortunately, every year we have uh, students who, even with their parents maybe, who tried to set up a housing in advance, and it, it was either a scam or or yeah. untrue or didn't work or was not with the place that they were expecting. So you have to come here and be here first to find a place, so. And say for a student like Theodore that will come for a longer time, not only a, a yeah. semester, um, yeah. you mentioned before uh, maybe to share a, a car or even to buy a car. Mm -hmm. What will be the cost for an old second-hand car? What will be the, the, the first price, uh, uh, more or less, yeah. just to give an idea to everyone? Uh, my first car was not that long ago, actually, I drove a used car for a very, very long time as an adult, sorry, um, but it was about $4,500 okay. for a Honda, yeah. a yeah. Honda Accord that ran for 10 years. So, okay. you know, like you can find a car for a few thousand dollars, uh, it might break down more for 3000 for 5,000, 6,000, a better car that probably has no issues, but it's more expensive, but you can keep it for three months and then sell it. So I, that's my estimate. Boris, what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, I am still driving mm. a used car that I bought about yeah. seven years ago. So, uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's very common, something very common to do. There are um, it, a yes. lot of different websites or dealerships out here where you can do that. Yes. Dealerships tend to be a little bit more expensive, but the cars that you get usually um, were checked mechanically that they're, you know, sound. So it really depends on your budget. Um, but if you're here, um, you know, for a year or so, 
uh, I think it's fine if you invest um, for a little bit of an older car. Uh, by the way, while we're speaking about cars, I also wanted to bring that up to you. Um, you can also get your driver's license here in California. Um, oh, yeah? It's, it's not that diff difficult to do. Um, and it's not expensive either. I know yeah. that when um, <laughs> back in Europe, uh, when, uh, you know, I was uh, there until I was uh, 27, I know that I had to spend like, I don't know, 2000 euros back then on a driver's license. Yeah. Over here, it's uh, more like $60. So I think, yeah, like you, 60. Yeah. yeah. So if you uh, if you're planning to do that, um, you know, it's definitely yeah. an option for you. You will probably have to take uh, a theory and a driving test, mm -hmm. but it doesn't come down to much more than that. So it no. is very inexpensive. And it's very fun. Our yeah. students love doing it. It's a great souvenir <laughs> to have of yeah. your time in America. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I will say uh, the other thing about uh, driving cars, what did we just talk about? Oh, for international students, um, we have a, a big international student association on campus, the ISA, International Student Association, and they work with our short term study abroad students and the full degree students, but they support everybody and they actually have WhatsApp groups. So people who just arrive and don't have cars and, but need a ride to the grocery store or something else or to uh, somewhere to go get a bicycle for the first time. Uh, they frequently share rides with um, the people who are more established and have cars with all the new newly arrived international students. So it's just very sweet. It's very family like. And even though we're a big school, it's easy to find that kind of help. So that's kind of nice. And do you have boards on campus where you can put an ad on it and all this kind of thing or, or you don't sort of? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, th there are a few um, like old school paper yeah. bulletin boards around, but they're not really used for personal posting very often. Okay. We have an online one that's sometimes used, but not that common. So it's easier to do it just by networking, by making friends. Okay. Yeah. That's the okay. easiest and fastest, or the Facebook groups to sell or post books or cars or hotels. Oh, hotels? No, H houses. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't sell a hotel. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. So that's more common, but it's usually not difficult for our students to find the right places to hook up with people. Uh, usually, Boris and I uh, pay attention to what's going on on campus so we can give you some tips. Uh, so you're not alone to try to figure it out. We'll help you. And then again, the international student group is the best resource because their job, what they want to yeah. do, they're passionate about helping the new yeah. international students to find, figure where everything else, right? So yeah. you're not on your own. Yes. Yeah, I can see that uh, on your videos and so on, that there is a lot of support to uh, to all the students. Yeah. They are really welcoming and uh, yes. I can see they will be in good, uh, in good hands on arrival. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. By the way, there's also uh, an international coffee hour every um, Friday on Friday. Our campus. So if you okay. like to meet other international students, if you want to get some some tips, some tricks, um, definitely a great place to attend, especially if you like coffee like I do. So, <laughs> yeah. so we also we didn't say, oh, yeah. Yes, but also about the welcoming thing, we have parties on campus and not the crazy like fraternity frat drunk movie parties that you see in movies, not like that. I mean, there might be some that I don't know about because I'm a grown up, maybe they do them without me. Um, but we actually have uh, campus sponsored student parties. So we have at least one big carnival uh, each semester where there's rides and music and DJs and they like shut down campus and put gates so only students could come in and those are free and we have the kind of um, the student body that is so welcoming that people actually go like nobody is I always use the phrase too cool for school <laughs> like okay. it's not like that the attitude here is students will be happy to do it so when we have the big show which is the, the actual title is called the big show that's the name of um, our concert on campus and they usually bring a, a very high profile good artist a musical guest every every year um, and students go uh, the cost I think is twenty dollars for a ticket so it's very cheap and people have fun and really like to do it so it's a very welcoming environment where students are always participating and doing things and they want to join the parties and they want to do what's on campus if there's an event on campus celebrating Halloween in October with okay. free pumpkins everybody shows up and we all get a free pumpkin and we take pictures with our pumpkins and <laughs> it's just fun you know people do fun things like that so that's mm. the kind of campus we have. That's great. And in terms of facilities, I know you mentioned all your, your sports facilities and you've got many cafes and restaurants on campus that students can access to. Um, any other things like, I don't know if you've got a health center, for example, or uh, a travel agency, or, I don't know, all these uh, kind of things available. 
Uh, yeah, we definitely do have a, a health center uh, available on campus. So if you're not feeling well, again, um, I think I had it on one of the slides. You can go there. Um, it's usually open from Monday to Friday. Um, there's medical staff in attendance if you're not feeling well. Uh, of course, if it's something, you know, if it's something super uh, serious or urgent, you uh, might want to consider going to the emergency room. But if it's not, if you're just not feeling well, um, then definitely take a look at the health oh. center. Yes, go ahead, Jess. The health center also has... Um... Uh, optometrist, so eye doctor, uh, dentist, and a female women's doctor, gynecologist. So there's all those range of supports and a pharmacy. So sometimes you can even get your prescriptions on campus. You have to pay for that, of course, uh, but the visits themselves the, to see a doctor are either free or certain specialties might have a $5 cost, very, very low. Yeah. That's great. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Um, then travel agency, uh, just uh, I'm not sure. I don't think that we don't. A... Uh, yeah. And as a public school, we wouldn't because that would support certain private entities or private mm, companies. Yeah, good point. So no, uh, but our staff, we love the travel. So <laughs> we talk about that all the time. For example, one of the other people in our group, uh, Natalie, she is actually she's from Argentina. So her first language is Spanish, but her sister lives in Mexico and she goes there all the time. So we always send our students to her when they want to talk about how do I go to Mexico and where do I have fun and how do I get across the border and come back. So we like to pretend to be travel agencies just to give you some <laughs> tips and some have tips. fun with it. Yeah, uh, we do have a, a bank on campus and we have a couple other things like that, too. Oh, go ahead, Boris. Yes, um, actually, um, we kind of have a travel agency, which is <laughs> CSUN internal, which is really cool. Um, so it's called Outdoor Adventures. Let me show you real quick. Um, right here, I brought it up on the screen. Um, by the way, csun.edu is a great resource to you if you guys have any questions or if you want to discover the campus a little bit more. Um, outdoor Adventures, yes, right now, ignore that notice. Um, right now, they do a lot of things virtually um, due to the pandemic, but they usually organize trips. They have uh, great stuff that you can do. Uh, as you can see here, adventure trips. Um, right now, it's virtually, um, but the, the cool thing here is that they offer it at a very, very steep discount to CSUN students. So if you want to, once they okay. open back up again, are they um, listed or let's, no? Let's see what they Do they show Sorry, last year's trips? You were breaking up a little bit. Can, can you click? I don't think so. Let's are they not see. listing the Let trips? me see what they have. Um, oh. That's okay. I don't think so. Yeah, I, right now, because of the current pandemic, yeah. But usually what they do is, just to give you an idea, they do, um, they organize, you know, trips to national parks, to um, Joshua Tree. They do canoeing and they do rafting. Uh, if you want to surfing. know how to surfing, if you want to learn how to surf, exactly. And that's, uh, you know, you get a very, very good um, price on that. And it's a, a great opportunity to meet other CSUN students as well. Um, so that's what they do right now, just because of the pandemic. That's why it's virtual, but it should go back mm. uh, sometime time soon um, so just look out for that but it's a great place that we have for our students on campus so it's called outdoor adventures and when you guys come we always um, mention that place and we always have a little flyer okay. usually updated in our office um, that we can show you so if you have any questions let us know and right now you can stalk them on instagram they still have all of their posts from previous trips to show you how fun it is some videos as well so you can look up csun outdoor adventures i think it's just oa csun oa i think maybe with a yeah, underscore, I so. yeah. I know we're coming at the end of the time. Is there any other questions or anything else we should mention that we forgot to talk about? You said a lot of things, which is great, but <laughs> maybe any of the students have any specific question? It looks like a Theodore. Another one, yes, uh, about uh, jobs, uh, mm -hmm. about finding the jobs while you're studying. Yes, great question. Um, we should have mentioned that, sorry, I don't think we did. Uh, you can actually study um, as a degree seeking student. So if you're a full-time degree seeking student at CSUN, you can study for, well, you can work on campus, on campus only for up to 20 hours a week during the semester. Uh, most jobs um, on our campus um, pay minimum wage and they can be literally anything. So it can be, uh, you know, if you want to, uh, they can be, they range from barista 
to student assistant. Uh, so all kinds of things um, that we have available usually during the semester. Minimum wage right now in California, I think just went up to $15 per hour, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that's definitely an option. Um, but keep in mind, that's for full-time degree seeking students. Um, so that's the one thing that you uh, would be limited as a semester student, you wouldn't be able to work on campus. As a full-time degree seeking student, you would. Okay, it's just an immigration uh, type of requirement. Right. So for example, for Theodore, because he's a master student, he's a full degree student, he could pretend even on the first year of his, of his master? Yes. He doesn't have to wait? Okay. And for you don't the, have to wait. Okay, but for the study abroad student, the one on semester basis, it's not possible to work, right? Right. Okay. And, uh, and then for going back for Theodore, he can find a job on campus, but then, mm -hmm. Um, knowing that uh, there are so many students, what, what is this chance to uh, to get a job actually? Mm, it depends. Um, depends what he is willing to do, right? So there are a lot of jobs on campus. Mm -hmm. Again, our campus is very large. There's okay. like, a, I think it's like 800 staff members full time who work there. So you can imagine how many departments, how many other places have uh, space for a student assistant or a student worker. Um, so there's thousands. Um, okay. So I, I, sometimes it's hard if you're being specific about what you want to do. Sometimes yeah. it's very easy if you can, if you'll do anything just to try. So yeah, I mean, it's anything. Um, and then some of our students, when they're uh, more established, so not their first semester, but um, once they know more about the Los Angeles or the, their field of the profession, they get uh, maybe a paid internship or some other thing where um, those are allowed, right, under the visa rules, uh, whereas an actual external job is usually not allowed. Uh, you'd have to get special permission. I mean, there's, you know, different rules that anyone who works with immigration or CVIS can explain those rules to you to help you understand them. Hmm. And then going, going back to the internship that it can be actually paid and outside of the campus, that will mm -hmm. be uh, from the beginning or you have to do a certain uh, no. length of studies? No, it's not easy. You would have to apply for them. They would be competitive. You would have to know where to go. So no, it's okay. not easy. <laughs> you, yeah. You'd have to work to get one, but people okay. do it and they love okay. it. So there's different different options. We have career services offices, yeah. the main one for the whole campus, as well as individual ones for specific colleges or specific faculty to give you uh, more field specific or profession specific internship ideas. So there's different ways to do that. But no, it's not easy. You can't start. You usually have to have the best grades and the best recommendations. Um, so and a good resume. Yes. Perfect. Uh, I have a question. Mm. Uh, for the, the spring semester, um, do you have uh, some uh, special advice for the, the, uh, the, the arriving? of the for the arriving of the student because for me it's uh, uh, you recommend uh, the 19th January but uh, I don't know the for me the the call start the the 24th of uh, January but I don't know what uh, when to 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 arrive so yeah sure, it so. depends if you are trying to find housing on your own or if you plan to live with us on campus if you live on campus, it's easy. Yeah, you you tell us what day and you just show up and we have the place ready for you. Very easy. If you're looking for your own housing, you might want to arrive before classes begin to give you time to find a place and get settled um, so that you can focus on school once school starts. Um, whenever you choose to arrive, just tell us. We're always happy to arrange early meetings with any of our students, even if they come 30 days early. We're able to do that. And we do frequently, right, Boris? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, one thing, um, Ili, that you would have to uh, keep in mind is, um, you know, there are certain immigration requirements, how early you can enter the 30 country. 30 days. And it's exactly 30 days. Yeah. Right? So that's yeah. why, why Jessica mentioned those 30 days. Yeah. Um, other than that, of course, if you look at January, right, some other things that you want to take into consideration is uh, Christmas and then right after you have New Year's. So it really yeah. also depends what works best with you. Um, sometimes it's a little bit more um, difficult to find um, inexpensive flights right around that, you know, Christmas or New Year's time. Mm -hmm. So take that into consideration as well um, when you make your plans. It's much cheaper to fly in January than December. 
to come to LA in January. So ideally wait till January to arrive. Um, and then also because we celebrate our New Year's uh, is a big deal here as well. So a lot of people don't like if you're trying to hunt for rooms and calling around places, they might not be answering in the first week of January anyway. So arriving the earliest would be probably the second week of January could be the earliest that would make sense to do something um, or live on campus, super easy. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna Hi. think, but I'm gonna add one thing here. Hi guys, I'm sorry, I'm jumping Hello. in. Hello. I'm Vanessa Andraji here. Um, you're in super good hands with the team and thank you for being here. But if I understood it correctly, the question you're asking about when it's a good time to come is January um, for the, the, the program. Is that correct? When it's a good time to fly? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So keep in mind that you're going to be coming in to the US on an F1 visa. Um, and, and that only allows you to enter the country 30 days prior to your that. start date of the program. Okay, thank you. Because I didn't I didn't hear that. Yeah. So you guys were talking about December, or like I'm like, oh, December may cut be cutting too close. So just keep that in mind. You won't be able to come in before 30 days um, of the start of your program. Thank you. Any other questions? Don't be shy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> Elliot, Guillaume, Pablo, vous avez des questions? Non? En ce moment, ouais. la plupart des trucs ont été dit. OK. <laughs> It's Arman. now or never. You have all of us here. Come on. <laughs> yeah, come on, go for it. It's now or never, you know. <laughs> and also, because we've been doing this for many years, we will happily tell you the honest truth of what other students have experienced or said. Uh, we don't need to hide it and make it sound pretty. So if you really want to ask any question about what our past students have experienced, we will be honest and tell you, right, Boris? <laughs> Yeah, no, always. Yeah, I mean, actually. you know, we um, we are uh, very honest, um, obviously, with our students. We don't tell you anything that isn't the truth. Um, yeah. We're very, um, you know, straightforward there because, uh, yeah, it's just uh, the way how we operate and how we work. So don't be shy. And it's always definitely, you know, CSUN is a great place to study. Um, and Southern California is a great place to live. Um, <laughs> and uh, any type of tips that we've heard or anything that you need to be careful about, uh, we're always here for you and we'll give you um, the best advice possible. Um, so, yeah. Did we tell them that they all need to be vaccinated to come to? No, we haven't Sunday? mentioned that actually. Very oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Yes. For January, yeah. yes. Yeah, that's very, very important. Okay. For you guys to come to um, CSUN um, in January, it's, it's a requirement. You're going to need to upload your vaccine status. Uh, as of uh, September 30th, um, that's a requirement for everyone on campus from staff, faculty, students. Um, once you are admitted, you have a student ID, you have access to a student portal. Um, and uh, as part of your, you know, um, welcome to CSUN and start of the program, uh, part of the requirements is that you upload your vaccine status. Now, some of you might say, and I'm not sure what the situation in France is, um, if you know vaccines are widely available for your age group, if it everyone is, is already yeah. vaccinated. So if it is, please back, back, do the vaccination as soon as possible so you'll be fully vaccinated by the time you come. Um, that would be the biggest recommendation I have right now. Um, if it isn't, there are other ways we can do in terms of quarantine and uh, self-isolating in uh, dorms on campus um, and so on and so forth. Um, here in the US, you will be able to get a vaccine, um, but you will limit a little bit your welcome to California and to CSUN in your first few weeks until you're fully vaccinated. So do it now. If you have it available in France, do it now. <laughs> Yeah, we nice. have it uh, pretty well uh, rolling in, in, in France. And I think uh, we already uh, done uh, around the table to, uh, to see that uh, hopefully all the students are, are vaccinated or, or going to. So that's great. I can see that Pierre just mentioned, thank you for, uh, <laughs> for joining. And Pierre is actually uh, 
the director of uh, international office of, uh, of one of our uh, partners so partner school so thank you pierre for being present tonight and uh, if you had any question feel free uh, otherwise we'll uh, we'll catch up soon there you go <laughs> Just to say hello, but I am in my car, you know. So. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> no worries. Well, Pleasure uh, meeting you. Then nice, nice. For, thank you for the information. Nice to meet you. Thank nice you, Pierre. Well. That was thank great. You, I hope. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank Cheers. you for joining us, Pierre. And and if there is anything you need from us, um, you know, and Sophie can schedule any other time as well, just between us, if that helps. Yeah, no worries. We'll do that. Euh, les étudiants, d'autres questions Guys, any other questions you may have euh, I don't know, Armel, euh, Lisa, do you have any specific question? Feel uh, free, totally. Uh, another question Yes, yes Ellie. About, uh, renting a car. Um, yes. what, uh, what, are, what are the solutions? Uh, is it cheap or expensive? Uh, what do mm. you propose Um, because uh, yeah, I think it's um, I I want to to travel a bit, yeah. uh, discover some new places. So um, I think it will be important for me. So yeah, if you have uh, some solution or, or advice, thanks. How old are you, Ali? Sorry to ask you, but uh, I'm uh, 20, 21. Okay, so uh, that answers part of the question. Go ahead, Jess. No, uh, did you want to do it, Boris, or me? No, go, go ahead. E either yeah. way, I mean, I think we all know the answer. <laughs> uh, if you are under 25 years old, it's more expensive to rent a car in America. Most of the same rental companies have the same policies. So it's just, it's more expensive. So we usually recommend a couple different things. Um, solution number one, do not rent a car for the entire time that you're here for months. Rent yeah. a car just for the weekends that you plan to do trips. Right. Or uh, number two, use a rental share service, which is different than a traditional rental car company. But um, we have uh, some on campus. What's the one on campus called? Zipcar. Zipcar, where you sign up for this membership and then you can borrow the car whenever you need to. There, at the last time I checked, there were six Zipcars living on campus and my students used it and really enjoyed that option. Um, and plus gas is included and parking at the location is included and gas is expensive here. So, you know, that's another nice way to save money. The third uh, option or solution is to Again, not commit to your own car, but rely on the rideshare services like Uber and Lyft, which because we're a big city, they're everywhere at all hours of the day. So usually it's not something we worry about. So if you're comfortable doing that type of program or that type of option, it's actually really easy and convenient here. And, and then I, when, oh, sorry. <laughs> and then I would just to add one more thing, Ellie. I, 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 you know, the, the, I think what um, Jess said about um, Uber and Lyft, and as well as the Zipcar, which is the car shared service on campus, is a very good solution for quick trips and, and you know, like yeah. maybe exploring Los Angeles and the region, um, or you know, going to um, Hollywood for a, a night at the nightclub, or you know, you're 21, you're good there. Uh, so I think that that could work. But if you're really thinking about renting a car for the weekend and exploring you know, the area around, you know, drive to San Diego, San Francisco, to the mountains, go skiing in Las Vegas, and, you know, all of those within driving distance uh, from us. One solution that we tend to see happen often with students, especially if you're under 25, don't rent the car on your own. Like, you know, gather a group of uh, friends that you're going to make here and get together and just say, hey, guys, let's explore such and such this weekend yeah. so you're not only you're going to be splitting the cost of the rental among two or three of your friends you're going to have company and better yet if one of your friends is 25 or older get, get them to rent the car so you're not paying the additional fees so there's always ways around it's just it's just a matter of uh, you know you asking and talking to the community and making your connections there and CSUN does have um, a partnership with rental car companies nearby for student discount price too. Then and, um, one one little thing here, uh, Ili, um, um, just in case if you are you know looking at other cities destinations, uh, apart from renting a car, you can also get there by um, well 
sometimes flying, right? Sometimes even you would be surprised how, um, you know, how it compares price-wise and sometimes a flight is less expensive than uh, renting a car. And the other thing is uh, train. There are some trains actually that leave from LA that you can take to either San Diego or Santa Barbara, uh, which are not too expensive either. So that might be another, another option for you to look into that. So a um, couple of options there. Um, if you have any questions, yeah, we of course will help you with that. Okay, thank you. Uh and guys, when you mentioned just earlier that the fact that you can also buy a secondhand car and uh, Jess actually gave her, 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 her example, do you need to be 25 as well or you can actually be, be younger for that? You could be 18. <laughs> oh, okay. So maybe, yeah, especially if you're there for a while, it can be also another option maybe. But then you also have to pay for insurance and the right? gas yeah, and, and the gas. So, you know, it's you, yeah. you decide what is fun for you and what is the right thing. That's not yeah. just the fun, but the cost. Right. Yeah. What kind of experience do you envision when you imagine living in L.A.? Do you want to drive yourself in, in your own car and a beat up <laughs> old car, but you're living the freedom life? Or do you want to rent something just for a short term that's bigger that you can fit all your friends in? Right. There's yeah. different rules. Yeah. And, and remember that when you buy a car as well, besides uh, gas and besides insurance, there's also the registration fee, the annual registration yeah. fee, and depending on where you live in, there is parking. Um, yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's not always you have free parking on the street, depending on where you are at. So, um, yeah. you know, all of us experience that one way or another <laughs> on a daily basis. So. <laughs> And we do have these reminders listed in our arrival guide that we will send to you once uh, it's closer to the start of the semester. Um, so that even if we talked about something today, uh, but we you might forget, we I'm pretty sure everything we have is written in there. So at least you know to ask us questions. Perfect. Guys, did you, wait, tell, them, did you tell them, Jess, about the, mm -hmm. them um, buying a car from another sex student? Is that what you're telling them? Like, or a study of like... No, but because we like don't... they buy and then they sell like within the. Oh like... yeah, yes, but because we're starting again January for the first time, we don't have other that students, so so we didn't bring it up. Yeah. <laughs> but that you can sell your car though. By by the time you're done, uh, and you know you could try to sell your car with within you know the Sun community. It's very yeah. Helpful. Yes, Same you could. Travel. Yeah, you can in buy Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. It's very easy to buy and sell cars in Los Angeles because everyone uses cars all the time. So it's not hard. Yeah. Great. Anyone's got any further question? Because we've been there for an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> we've been talking nonstop. So uh, I don't know, guys, uh, any last question you may have or not? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, maybe about the, the class. Um, yeah. I'm a civil. I think I choose a engineer, a civil engineering. Yeah. So um, and I also take the the housing. Um, and uh, for the, the the hour of uh, the the time of um, of uh, classes per per week. Um, it's, we uh, mentioned that before the, the classes per week Eli, we mentioned it will be like just say it depends on the on the type of class you will take okay. and if you need lab or practical but usually the average you know it's a, it's really different to France where we've got a lot of classes uh, in the American system and the, the uh, it, it's often less contact hours but then you you also have a lot of work to do uh, before you come to the next classes as well so um, maybe you guys just want to mention something else on top of it uh, no I still think that's the right answer even for civil engineering mm. um, like I said some of those classes will include labs which is more work and some will just be lecture which is less work yeah okay and um, is the the class or stacked uh, like uh, Monday mm. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, Wednesday, or it's like more uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or it depends. Or... It depends. Yeah. Yeah. We're okay. a, we have a like I, we said about nine thousand classes every semester, so they all fit together like puzzle pieces uh, yeah. to make yeah. sure there's times and all the time. So um, a lot of our classes, like our master's programs, they the graduate level courses, they tend to be in the evenings. So sometimes even you as a bachelor student may have a class from six o'clock to nine o'clock p.m. in the evening, 
Maybe it meets one day a week, so Mondays from six to nine, or maybe you have a class in the afternoon from four o'clock to 6.15, so an hour and 10, 15 minutes, but twice a week. So um, it can range. We rarely have a class that meets every day, Monday through Friday. Most classes are one day a week or two days a week for either a longer time or a shorter time for two days a week. So that's typical, uh, but they could be as early as eight o'clock in the morning, which we will tell you, do not take those classes. <laughs> do not take an eight o'clock in the morning class because then you will have fun the night before, sleep through class, miss the class. And then your professors will email me and say, where's your student? They're not showing up to class. <laughs> I will say, I'm sorry. I think they were having too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the honest truth. So no eight o'clock classes for most of you, but uh, maybe nine o'clock, 10 o'clock class, that'll be fine. <laughs> so yeah. students actually get the choice. Can they actually uh, organize the agenda or do you actually say for you, it's only that time and that hour and that day? It depends if they're flexible on which classes they want to take. And okay. because our school is so big, let's say, for example, there is a civil engineering 325 class but maybe that class is so popular, we have it at five different times and you can choose which one. Uh, so it depends what you're doing. In the business school, for example, our business classes have many different time options, but you don't get a choice. The way that the business college gives enrollment, uh, they assign students to certain times and you usually don't have much choice in changing them. But in engineering and science, in languages and history and humanities, you might have more choices. So it really depends. Okay. And w when do they find out about the calendar? Um, do, is it on arrival or is it actually nope. just before? The schedule is available now. It's public on our website and anyone can look. Um, okay. They work with me and Boris to arrange their schedule in advance. Okay. So you should know your schedule. Ideally, you would know it 30 days before the semester begins. Perfect. Sometimes we don't know it until two weeks before because mm -hmm. it depends on which departments are making decisions on how they place students or approve students for classes. Um, but you will know it uh, before your first day. And if not, even on your first day, you also still have a chance to make changes. Mm, so you can always great. have, in, in our school, we have the freedom of choice called crashing classes, where you can freely go to another class and change it if you don't like the professor you have and you want to make a different different change. Um, so we offer that flexibility, and that's kind of fun, kind of chaotic and kind of scary if you're not used to it, but we explain it to you and we'll make it easy, I promise. <laughs> uh, it looks like Boris is sharing his screen to show you the class search website. Um, yeah. We also have those instructions that we send out to every applicant, so you'll have that as well. Um, I'll make sure that, Anne sophie you have your own copy so you can share that with a student if you'd like. It's a PDF document that explains how to use this website. You, yeah, I think I've got it already, and uh, I think I, I send it to the study abroad students. So, But yes, the, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's, it's easy to find too. Um, if yeah. uh, Eli, if you have any questions or if you want to yeah. look at it, it's just a uh, CSUN and then class search, and that's how you get to this website. So I, I personally, I search engine pretty much everything. So um, <laughs> that's how I navigate a lot of things as well. So um, yeah, this is how you would get here, um, and then you can okay. select the semester and the classes and the program. So it's it's fairly straightforward. Yeah. Okay. Morris, could you show us the CSUN homepage real quick? Oh, oh uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> One second, let me... Sorry. Oh, no worries. No worries. To... Okay, so, so that's the csun.edu. Just click on the logo and it'll go right there. Yeah. On the right side of the page, um, if Boris scrolls down just a little bit when it loads, okay. sorry, you'll see a little section where it has important things that might be helpful for all of you. It's public. You do not need to log in to see this information. If you scroll down below roadmap compliance there, you have it, you can click on academic calendar. Oh, don't oh. do it, Boris, don't click. But can you just point and show it with your mouse? Oh, oh okay, so oh, oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, so academic calendar will give you our days and times if you have questions about holidays and what to expect. But uh, and anyway, I was trying to show you below that was class search, but I guess he, yeah, that's the right no, place. No, no, that's it. 
yeah. yeah sorry sorry guys uh, i just noticed because i was navigating my computer is a little old so when i do too many things and i just could not hear <laughs> just what you were saying so i hear you in my uh, ear and oh, sorry. So sorry about that guys but yeah that's okay so C but csun.edu um that's where you can find all the information so it's all publicly available uh sorry guys that my computer was yeah that's okay but that little section has three things that are helpful for you so i just i'm just saying that's a very easy way to find the class search the calendar and the catalog that's great yeah and if you're talking about um the website i think it's also important to um refer to the fall planning and, and um right now it's the fall planning or forward use and forward i don't know which is the term that they are using because they keep changing every term depending on um, the updates but it, it has all the, the procedures protocols uh, answers questions regarding everything from classes to housing to vaccine status to everything about uh, system policies um, Yes, Currently. but it's so all, that's also another. One. But it's only for right now for the fall semester. Um, mm -hmm. We expect some things to change for the January semester, the spring semester. So that's why we didn't share that yet. It's not. I don't want you to read it and get confused and think that those things are important for you when you come. Yeah, they're not. It's not the right ones yet. <laughs> all right, guys. Any last question, or should we just? Um... Thank you, uh, Vanessa, Boris, and Jess for being present and being uh, kindly answering all our questions for an hour and a half now. <laughs> so, uh, um, any last question at all? No? no. Well, anyway, you you can get in touch uh, with me uh, later on if uh, if you've got uh, any other question. Drop me an email or call me tomorrow. Uh, but anyway, it was absolutely wonderful to, to have you, uh, the three of you today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you. It was, uh, it was lovely. You will, uh, you will have uh, hopefully a, a very nice uh, bunch of uh, French students from Studies Up coming to you in January. So uh, I want to see pictures there and uh, videos and, you know. <laughs> And uh, uh, I'm sure they will have a lovely time. I wish I could take a plane and join them, but uh, <laughs> maybe another time would be lovely to, uh, to come and see you guys and uh, finally uh, meet you uh, physically and not only uh, e-virtual way. Uh, thank you again so much. And um, thank you, everyone. I uh, hope you enjoyed in this uh, session. And... Um, uh, we'll uh, we'll keep in touch anyway. It's been recorded, so we will actually put it also on our YouTube channel. So uh, if any of you want to replay it, feel free to do so. Thank you again. Thank, thank you. you, and thank you for the partnership. And uh, thanks, Jess and Boris, for um, taking the lead here and, and doing um, great work as always. Thank, thank you, guys. you so much. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.